Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafting with Holly. In this video, I am going to actually walk you through how to assemble all six of these cards from a four sheet wonder that I just got done making out of these beautiful Country Woods designer series paper. And I know I just said that incorrectly, so let's go back and look. It's the Country Lace designer series paper. And I'm gonna drop down in the comments below the very first video that I created, walking you through how to color these beautiful images and just my thoughts and ideas on the tri-blend markers that Close to My Heart used to carry versus the Stampin' Up! blends. And you get to be the judge, but I am really loving these Stampin' Up! blends and I didn't think I was going to, so that was a pleasant surprise. So we're gonna start with this card right here. This is card one, this is card two, card three, card four, card five, and then we're gonna round it out with card six. I've done most of the coloring, but I did wanna walk you through how to do the coloring on the pail and on the chair, because I got a little bit of tips and tricks along the way for you. So I'm gonna just pile these up in this corner right over here and make sure that everything is in view. And then I've got all of my card bases and pre-cut things down here. In the guide, not only will you get the instructions for cutting everything, but you will get some beautiful colored videos, or excuse me, colored images, and you will get all of the cutting instructions in the guide. And I am offering that free in the month of July with a $50 purchase. And don't forget that tomorrow, July 3rd, starts the bonus days at Stampin' Up! And this video may or may not air before then. So just remember that bonus day starts on July 3rd and runs through the 31st of July, which is super exciting when you spend $50 or more. Every $50 that you spend, you're gonna get a $5 coupon back in rewards that can be used in August, which is super exciting. Think of it like Kohl's cash, kind of cool. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through how to color the pail and the chair right here. And I'm gonna get all of these other little bits and pieces and set them off to the side. And I used the Stampin' Blends in the light slate and dark slate. They're noted, they're right here on the side of the markers, right there. And then I also use the Colorless Blender. So I'm going to set that over there. We are going to do the chair first. And so the key is to just stay on the inside. And I see that there's like this little fuzz on here. Oh, it's right here on my paper. Let's get that off, that's not gonna help. I love the brush tip side because you, it's so smooth, you guys. So smooth and so easy to blend color and layer color. And I'm really enjoying this feature on these markers. And they are alcohol based. And that's why they call them blends because you can blend them just beautifully and you don't see that line of demarcation when you are blending because they are alcohol based. So I'm just pulling the light color down, really trying to stay inside the lines. I didn't do the greatest job on some of these other ones. So thank goodness for the colorless blender because you can fix any of your marks that go outside the lines with them. So now I'm taking the darker one and I'm gonna create some depth right here in the corners. And then I'm gonna take the light shade again and I'm gonna blend over that. And I'm gonna bring some color down in here. Just like so. And then I'm gonna go back and take the light shade and I'm just going to softly blend this color into the center just like that there you go 
and you really get this really cool effect when you do that. It almost looks like it's a uh, little bit of streaking, but it's so cool. And I really love that. It just creates almost like this antique look to this chair. That was so cool, you guys. I love this. I could not achieve that same look with the tri-blends. Um, they're just not as, they don't give you that rich depth that you get with the Stampin' Blends. Can you, can you tell the difference? Both of them are really nice, but I am more attracted to something that has some real great depth. So that is that. And now for the pail, I did stamp the pail on Mink, the Light Side of Mink cardstock from Close to My Heart. And then again, like I said, we're gonna use the light shade first. Just to color in and create some continuity and some depth and just give it that rustic kind of look. And I'm just kind of coloring in the corners here. And then I'm gonna pull some color out with the colorless blender. And before I do that, I'm gonna grab the dark and just get a little bit of depth going in here. Like I said, I'm really liking this brush tip because it just is so smooth. And now you can pull color with the light, just like this. And it does a great job blending those colors together. I'm just creating a little bit more depth over here. But the biggest thing that I love about this colorless blender is that it just kind of pulls those colors out and really creates more of like that antique look that I'm going for. And as it dries, it just, the colors get more blended together. It's just really cool. And I really struggled with the tri-blend marker trying to achieve that look with the colorless blender for the tri-blend. So I'm actually a lot happier with those Stampin' Blends. Okay, now that we've got all of these pieces colored, we are ready to assemble. And again, like I said, this is card number one. I use the Country Florals polymer, photopolymer stamp set. The dies are on this side, the stamp clear stamps are on this side and we're going to use the stamp set that says so lucky to know you so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up with the intense black ink and let me just get this inked I'm going to bring this over here let that set for a few seconds I really liked the script and the font for this. And that is just so perfect. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. Get my ink pad out of the way so I don't get anything where I don't want it. And we're gonna start by taking this DSP and we're going to attach it slightly to the right. just like that and then we're going to offset with this one just like that and then I do need some scissors and I don't see ah I got a pair here this one actually needs to go underneath and then this one is going to kind of come up and this is the one that's going to get dovetailed it really is a great way to use up scraps and not have to use a full sheet of paper to create that banner. And I'm gonna move this slightly 
up just a smidge, just a smidge because I want this piece to hang over like that. And that's gonna go just like that. And then this one, I want it to hang over as well. And that's gonna go just like that. And in my first video, I talk about these dies and how amazing they are. So make sure that you check that out. And I'm gonna just put that one right there. And then the bench is gonna go right like that. Love this pail. Oh my goodness, I love this pail. And I did use dimensionals on this just to create some depth and that's gonna go like that and then I added dimensionals to this and I want my flowers to come down like that so I want the dimensionals to be just up here at the top and then that is gonna sit just like that isn't that just the sweetest thing I love that pail and then these are part of the dies right here. They're um, these clusters here and these clusters. And so I cut multiples of those out of lemonade, I wanna say, and avocado. Close to my heart cardstock, because you know me, I still have lots of beautiful cardstock left over. And in fact, this is the peach cardstock from Close to My Heart. And I'm just taking glue dots and layering these single leaves. And then we're gonna tuck them behind right here. And that's the one thing that I'm really finding that I love about the Stampin' Up! dies that come with their stamp with their stamp sets the details are just incredible they're just so beautiful for layering and the texture in them I just love them so there is card one that is done so now let's bring in card number two we are going to dovetail these two pieces Just like this. And I did want to bring attention to this fabulous embossing folder because it's part of the suite and it's the Eyelet 3D. I did um, take some mink cardstock, the light and the dark, and I took peach, the light and dark. And I just wanted you to see that these would be great background papers on this. But as I was creating these cards and putting them together, I just realized that this was just a little too much texture when going and putting these pieces on top of them. So it definitely is something that you can do if you want. And you can see that it does add some really beautiful texture, but I thought it was too distracting. And so I decided to not do the background paper behind here but you know what it's totally up to you and you could do it and it still looks really beautiful so I'll let you be the judge on that one in fact I'd love for you to put in the comment section if you would add this textured paper behind these cards or if you would just leave them as is I'm building them as is so that um, those of you that are opting to just follow the guide that I am giving you. Whoops, let's make sure we open the card the right way, Holly. That is always an important thing. So this is a real narrow border. And then we're gonna add this one. And some of these cards also have a decorative line around them with black uh, a black 
Oops, I think this might need to move these just a smidge. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit. That's the great thing about you watching me put these cards together is you can kind of see the process that I go through and you know, sometimes I have to adjust and sometimes I have to um, change the directions <clears throat> that I'm originally going in just so that I can accommodate all the pieces and get them to match. Okay, this is gonna go right here in the center and then those two denim banner pieces are going to come right on each side. So we're gonna tuck that one in just like that and that one like that. Perfect. That's not the greatest, so you know what? I think I'm gonna fix that because that's gonna bug me when my points are not as sharp as they could be. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, there we go. And then this is going to come down here like that. We're going to add some dimensionals to the jug. Love the flower jug. And you could even stamp little flower market from the stamp set on here, but because the flowers are kind of going uh, and covering this up quite a bit because I don't want them to get in the way of my sentiment, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked anyway. So I'm gonna just add some adhesive here and I want this to kind of come off to the side like that. So it's gonna kind of fall a little bit lower just so that you can see the sentiment and then again I'm going to just take some glue dots and accent with these beautiful flowers and that's going to go there and then this little guy is just going to kind of tuck out in between both of them and that's one of the double ones so cute and then let me show you how I did that, those black lines. I just took a journaling pen. And my best tip is to hold your breath when you're drawing your lines so that your hand doesn't shake. And I tend to pick it up just so that my hand doesn't shake. And then connect them. And this is going to be a little bit trickier because it's a real narrow line. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, and now we're going to bring in this one, which is card number three. Get all of those pieces. And we're gonna draw the line all the way around this after we get all the pieces glued down. So this is gonna go right up against the left side. This one is gonna go flush right like that. And then this one is gonna go right on the inside like that. And then I took my journaling pen and I did do some dashed lines. Just like this. Oops, let's get that off to the side. And then we're gonna just finish this up like that. There you go, real simple. 
Okay. And then I'm gonna attach this. And I wanted it to show a little bit more of that DSP. So we're gonna move this chair over here. And we wanna keep it still touching that denim paper. Get some dimensionals on here. I love how super sticky these are. And this is gonna go, let's bring that down just like that. And then we're gonna have this come off to the side like that so that you can still see that beautiful. So I'm gonna put the dimensionals right here where I want them. And then this little guy is just gonna come over like that. And then get some glue dots. Like that. And then this one, I kind of had it kind of overlapping like that. And then this little cluster is gonna come up in here and kind of tuck behind that one. So you may have to adjust it accordingly with the that glue dot. It's so stick, so so sticky. There we go. Isn't that brushes? Oh my goodness, I love this card. Okay. We have three more to go. And now this one, and actually this card did not get folded. Actually, I'm going to trim that off, you guys, because that is going to bu bug me. Sometimes when I cut my own card bases, the paper is not always the right dimension. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to draw the line on this one, and I'm going to try and be as careful as possible to get it right up to the edge. Because I want just a real narrow border. Like I said, I tend to just take in a nice deep breath and that way my hand doesn't shake. Okay. This one's coming in just a smidge like that. Oops, and I ran out of adhesive and it's a good thing I got my refills right here. Pop that little guy in, like so. And then this is gonna overlap like that. And then this comes in just like that. And that one does overlap, just so that we've got so much more room And that's going to sit just like that. Oh, did not come off. That would be important. <laughs> and then we just want a couple of these dimensionals right there. And then this little guy is going to sit just like that. These come together so quick and easy. The hardest part truly is the coloring. And then I want this to actually come in just a little bit more, just like that. 
perfect. And then we're going to put those flowers down here on this side. this little cluster and that is going to get tucked in down like that. And like I said, if you have to, you can move those around and adjust them, but isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. Okay, two more to go. Two more to go. I love quick and easy cards. I think that's the same one. Oh, yep, because it was probably the other. Coordinating base that I cut. Okay. Now this one, you want to line these up like this, and this one might need to get tucked in a little bit to match up. And then this comes over to the side like that. So let's put this one down first. So you wanna make sure that you've got that one lined up right. And then we're gonna tuck this little guy in just like that. Perfect. Get that on there. We are going to dovetail this piece. And this one is gonna come over like that. Get some dimensionals on here. I swore I wasn't going to get this set. And then the artwork that has been shared all over from the artisan design team to other demonstrators has been so phenomenal that I was like, okay, I have to buy it. And you know what? I'm so glad I did because these are the sweetest cards and they are going to be so wonderful to mail out. And we want this to come down oh, just like that because I want it to kind of hang over. And then let's get some of these little guys on here. Want one there, one there. And then we're going to stack these two. I did find that I had quite a few of these left over. Which is just fine, you know. Whoops, let's do that like that. And then I'm going to just set a little bit of adhesive on the back of this and tuck it inside just like so. And there we go. We have one last card to do. So I'm going to set this off to the side. Here is the last one. I've got all of my pieces right here. And we are gonna attach some adhesive on here. I will do that drawing after I get all of the pieces glued down. I'll do those uh, journaling lines around there, but we're gonna just attach these first. I do need to dovetail this piece as well, just like so. And then this one is gonna just kind of hang over just a smidge, just like that. And then we'll get this, attach it. And then when I did my journaling lines, I did skip a little bit down there at the bottom, just so that it wouldn't run into that. And then this is gonna, let's tuck this in behind here. I might have to lift that up a little bit. Let me try and see if I didn't get too much adhesive on there. Okay, just like that. Let's get some dimensionals on here. 
just like so. That's going to kind of hang over just like that. And then this is going to sit up here brilliantly with a little bit of dimensionals. And let's see, we wanted these to kind of come like that. And I wanted to have you see a little bit more of that beautiful jug. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach these just like so. Love it when the glue dots stick to my fingers. <laughs> and then we're going to take these little leaf clusters and attach them and then we are done. Just grab this little leaf and there we go okay now let's do the journaling like I said that I would again like I said I, I truly have to take a breath Otherwise, my hand will shake. But it really helps. <laughs> and then, I just skipped in there a little bit. And there we go. We did it. We made six beautiful cards out of a four sheet wonder. And I hope you enjoyed all of these little tips and tricks along the way. And I can't thank you enough for following my channel, for subscribing, click that bell notification so that you get notifications every time I post a new video. And I just want to just say thank you so much for helping me grow this channel this year, you guys. It's been an amazing journey, and I couldn't do it with all of you. So thank you again for being a part of this crafting journey. And like I said, um, coming up next is going to be the first video where I walked you through all of these beautiful coloring tips and tricks. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you soon.